Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. I hope you've had a good week. I missed you guys last week. I was taking care of some family business, so Terry was on his own. How did it go? Uh, it was wild. <laughs> I got arrested twice. <laughs> I hope you did a good job all by yourself. I tried, but you know what? It actually is hard when you're used to always having your partner. Um, it's weird. It's weird after all this time. After all these many, many, many studio Sundays. Yes. <laughs> it's strange flying solo. Okay, so lots is happening in the studio in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> yeah. We have Terry Moore Live April 1st through 3rd, just two weeks away. Oh, man. Are you ready? I'm Rick. Are you ready? Almost. We'll have lots of sketches, original art, and live streams, including Studio Sunday is live on, on the 3rd. Live. <laughs> live. Oh, I have some really choice things to say. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, maybe you're not accustomed to being Lots on camera. Lots of surprises. Camera. Uh, you know that. I'm just going for it. It's a world feed, you know. You're on global <laughs> TV. <laughs> Be careful. Also, the Serial Omnibus is scheduled to ship late next week. So we're getting everything prepped and ready to ship out the Abstract Limited Editions. Thank you so much for everyone for your patience. This has been a... Hmm. It has been a challenge to say the least. Yeah, trying to get it from the printer. It was ready a long time ago and the rest is printed. No, printing. it wasn't ready a long time ago. <laughs> it wasn't? No. My part was. Oh, you are you sent it in a long time ago, but they because things aren't shipping from China, everybody's now printing in Canada, where we've always printed. And so they've been backed up because right. of all the work. And so they kept pushing it forward and... Now we're just keeping our fingers crossed that when it ships, it, everything goes smoothly. We have a great shipper, so I'm hoping it all works out. Picture like a long line outside the printer's building. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, comic shops will have a hardcover and a softcover retail version available the first week in April. Yeah. Hopefully you guys will have your limited editions by then as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and that same week we'll be in Greenville, South Carolina for the South Carolina Comic Con. And that's happening April 9th and 10th. It's our first show in over two years. Scary. Yeah, it's going to be a little strange. We're a little apprehensive, but at some point you just have to take a leap of faith and know that life will go on. That's right. And we're going to an extremely pretty uh, little town and everybody is so nice there. So it should be a great experience. So we'll have books, art, and we'd love to see your smiling face. So come yeah. out and see us. I mean, really, see your face. <laughs> <laughs> We may be having masks on. We'll have to decide. I'm going to have both full masks. Yeah, I like this. I'll look at you like a ninja. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Um, no, I've been drawing, and I have a, a, a big fat folder full of drawings right here. So uh, that's my part. And also, we Robin has these massive sketches of pulled original art for the art cell. They're and not sketches. Been, oh, um, original art, comic art. Yes. From the books. And... We've been scanning and preparing those for the website. We have about 150 pages to put up. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully you can find something there that you love. I know, and many of these have never been out before because we had to do the full computer prep to get them converted to JPEGs and everything. So um, a lot of new material for you to look at. Good. Yeah. And I think there are three or four pieces of sketch art that have to do with peace and we're going to donate yes. those to the proceeds from that to the uh, world central kitchen to help those in uh, the horrible situation over in ukraine so uh they're doing a great job feeding people mm -hmm. over there so we're going to help a little bit and we would appreciate you helping us as well yeah. great okay do you have anything else to add mm -mm. mr moore just happy to be here happy to be drawing Okay, well then let's get on the hot seat. Okay. Okay, first I went to YouTube to see if there were any questions and saw that last week uh, there weren't any hot seat questions and you had half the number of views that you usually have and no comments. Because 
Robin wasn't on camera. Oh, no, please. So, but what's up with that? It was nothing but my art. And I'm, not no saying, Robin. I'm not saying it's all about me, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, <laughs> you know, they don't come here for this face. <laughs> well, they certainly don't come here to see me. <laughs> they love your voice. Oh, and you keep me on my toes. So yeah, it was it's that's the Robin factor. Oh boy. You have just oh, boy. you have just gotten job security for life because of the Robin factor. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I plan on Bye. being on a beach somewhere soon, sipping my ties. <laughs> oh Lord. Well, I hope I'm next to you. Anyway, please post your questions and we'll get them answered for you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Terry's just on his own out there. Otherwise, let's talk about, uh, oh, I know, politics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because of this, we only have one question today. Okay. I hope it's about art. Well, it's actually about your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I like my shirt. Okay. Uh, this says, I love your style and was wondering how you got there. Did you purposely set out to draw more realistically? Looking back on your earlier work, I can see your drawing has evolved. Was that on purpose or did you just happen or did it just happen over time? You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know what? You can almost see the evolution of these with these paintings on the wall. Um, I mean, the graphics on the wall. You can see that um, there. I used to be the cartooning like that and then the Strangers in Paradise cover and then it ended up with more realistic style. So the reason why is because I came from a cartooning background. I was trying to do comic strips. So everything was, you know, just loose and cartoony. Uh, a lot of open lines and simple faces, you know, a line for a nose, that kind of thing. And when I got into the, telling the story, uh, my first story, Strangers in Paradise, I felt like I, you can actually even wrote more cartoony, but as the topics became more serious, I wanted the characters to look like a little more relatable. Like you could really imagine all the little nuances of their expressions. Instead of just having eight broad cartooning expressions, I wanted all those in-between expressions, you know. Um, and it just made me start drawing more detail. And one thing led to another. And here I am, you know, with trying to, I'm hovering somewhere between comic strip and uh, illustrators. I'm not an illustrator by any means, but I have tried to find my own style in between somewhere. And that, you know, it's just funny how you Did get you that. realize you were, your style was changing as it was changing over the years? Yes. And I Did felt, you try to go back? No, never. But I might do an homage to the, going back to the comics with like a short uh, dream sequence. And I think, let's do it cartoony, something like that. But I did keep trying to improve my style because I was also measuring myself against the best people in the business who were um, doing great work. And so it kind of brought me up. It was like being in a class where everybody's smarter than you. It brings you up. And I, I did feel like I was trying to evolve in public, change and grow up in public. And I just accepted that. I, I Some people seem to come on the scene fully uh, mature with their style. I just wasn't like that. I, I just had to go ahead and change in public. And thank goodness I had a very uh, supportive readers who... Uh, who stuck it out. Who stuck it out <laughs> and watched the change and just kind of went with it, you yeah. know. So it was really a good situation, very healthy. I think if you want to make changes and stuff like that, people understand artists like to do that. And uh, they're very supportive, the general public are. Right well, now. you can see the full range just by reading Strangers in Paradise. Yeah, in one book. Look at the first page and the last page. And there it is. I mean, so it was a long process. I mean, it was 12 years or so to get there. How well, long was it, it was 14 years. 14 years? Yeah. 14 happy, wonderful, blissful years. Okay, well, do you have anything else? No, but that's a really good question. Thank you for asking that. And um, I'm not done. I'm still growing. You're still evolving? Yeah. I Maybe really you'll evolve back into cartooning. Devolve into cartooning. <laughs> no, it could be evolve. Ooh, I went through all this just to be good enough to be a cartoonist. There you go. I, I continue to call myself a cartoonist, not a comic book illustrator. Yeah. I'm a cartoonist. 
I'm just kind of drawing more detail right now, but it'd be great if I could go back to the simple style and it really worked better now. Stay Speaking tuned. Of, yeah. Okay, that's it for me. You guys have a great week. What are you drawing today? Uh, today I've been doing, you know, I probably have over 50 sketches ready for the art sale. And he keeps telling you guys how many numbers, how many he has. He's so happy. I know. I'm I so mean, happy. we need about twice that. That? Yeah. Oh my God. So uh, I did a couple of unusual things in here, and I'm going to show them to you and show you how I did it. Okay. Let's see. Okay, meet me here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the Robin factor, too. <laughs> so let's just pull some out. Here's what I have so far. And some of them, um, I've been making up little stories when I post them. This is uh, Stephanie from uh, the Parker Girls. And it's funny, some, uh, some people know my characters better than I do. I thought she had a Parker tattoo down here. I'm trying to remember a previous pinup and uh, somebody pointed out, nope, that tattoo's supposed to be up here. <laughs> so I've got to move the Parker Lily up here. This is a pose that I've drawn a few times at con comic conventions. I'll do a quick draw, um, especially like in the front page of a book. If somebody asks me to remark it and they slip me a thousand dollar bill, um, I do that. <laughs> Yeah, but I decided to draw it for real. So this is, you know, a rend highly rendered version of it. Um, I got in trouble for drawing this one because I'm supposed to draw my own characters, but it was fun. And this is Julie from Rachel Rising. And uh, Kachu does not do does not do koi, is how I posted this one. From um, this is Jet. And again, a scar because she was in a terrible car accident in Rachel Rising. And um, for some reason, I decided to do an Art Nouveau uh, bed uh, stand behind her because it was just very blank back here. And I thought, oh man, let's just go for one of those old met Metro, you know, Art Nouveau building design things. Francine at the beach. Um, no scars on Francine. Hawaii, you can tell it's Hawaii. Jet in the, in the wintertime. It snowed a lot in Manson. So we saw Jet like this a lot in the story. Casey from Strangers in Paradise. Probably one of the happiest, most upbeat people you'll ever meet. Um, and just, wow. She brought so much life to the series. She was like this a lot. I kind of went crazy on this one. This is the kiss, uh, Francine and Kachu style. So it's weird to draw the kiss in black and white, isn't it? Because it's one of the most beautiful color paintings ever. And this one really turned out kind of cool. I, li I like the way it's all just against white. And this is Mike, of course, from Moto Girl, um, the gorilla who is the constant companion for the war veteran, Samantha. So let's take two drawings and talk about the challenge of drawing them. Um, these two here feature the same art problem, which is how to draw parts of the body that are behind, that are unseen because they're behind something else. Um, and this one, for example, um, we don't see um, most of Casey's body. So how do you how do you draw this so that the head looks like it's actually connected to this part over on the right side? So if I take some tracing paper, um, what I did in the original sketch on this paper, and then I erased it, sorry, um, is I finished the drawing of Casey. So clearly, you have to, not only did I have to know where that body goes, so there's the body and there's the spine right up in there. So that's the center point of the back. And then the shoulder is here. And then the arm is going behind Tambi. And then again, the neck, I can't see the neck 
uh, behind Casey's shoulder. So you have to know where the center point of the top torso is. So there's the shoulders. Now we're drawing up through the body. The shoulders from the underside and the hole for the neck like that. And then the skull is in there. So you have to be able to visualize that like a sculptor in three, a turnaround, so to speak. And then there's also the problem of what happens over here on the other side. How do you know this curve over here is right? Let's turn this over so you can see it. There. You see it? So that's a tricky thing to draw. And what you do is that when you're making your pencil roughs, when you're drawing, you know, like that, you just, you, you figure it out in the pencil rough, um, lock in the parts that you're gonna see, and then uh, erase the parts you're not gonna see. And you, now you've got Tambi in front. You can picture doing that. Um, if you were in drawing in the digital domain, this would just be one layer. Casey's all one layer. And then you draw uh, um, Tambi, put her on the top layer, and then erase Tambi's shoulder to get it underneath um, the layer of Casey. And you're basically doing that with pencil and eraser. Um, another example is here. Francine's body, you cannot see it, but it's really important that it be um, the right length, the right proportion, and that you'd be doing that in a way that makes sense. So while sketching it out, like this, easy, right? And then you have Kachu laying right on top. Now the tricky part, of course, is to um, see those two blended in, 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 with your eye and then work on bringing out the parts that need to be in front. So everything in the foreground, like Francine's arm, is in the foreground. That's, that's the very first thing that we see. Then it's Kachu's arm linked to Kachu's body. And then all of this disappears on Francine. Somehow you have to get that to work to happen, but also get these faces just in the right place. So where do you start with a drawing like this? I actually started with Kachu's face first and then Francine's face, making sure that the eyes had contact like that. Um, there's going to be a difference in, in the lengths of all their features compared to each other when they're this close. Kachush's nose is shorter. Um, anyway, it really shows up. And that's part of what makes each character distinctive. Then, once you get the head here, sketch in the prone position in the arm. And then uh, have this head here. Sketch in the support of the neck. And then the body that you were looking for in that prone position. So you can already see that it's working because um, if I turn it over, there's what we have. A prone body and then another prone body on top. Spine, center point. That's how you start. And everything else is details. And you figure it out as you go along. So it's really just start, figure out your, uh, what your priority is. And for me, it's always the faces and the expressions and the eye contact. Um, if you notice, even in this one, the eye contact, uh, Tambi is looking right at you and Casey is looking right at you. They're not looking off to the sides as if somebody else is in the room. It's all about you. Um, they're smiling at you. They're about to leave the room, I think, but uh, you're there and they're smiling at you unapologetically. 
uh, something like this, where Francine and Kachu are jumping on a bed. It looks like it's very layered. Uh, there's actually three layers here. There's the figures, the sheets, and then the bubbles in the back, or the bouncing balls. Um, I actually did the figures first and then drew in the sheet to wrap around. And if you'll notice, all of the sheet is behind them. Everything on the bed is behind them. And the only time that I got anything in the way is this one sheet right here, just to give a sense of 3D. That one little bit right there turns this whole in, this whole thing into a 3D perspective. Um, otherwise, they could have been way out in front of the sheets, but this connects them to the sheet. Because that part of the sheet comes from the back of the bed, you can kind of tell where they are in, in airspace over the bed. Um, and then this leg coming forward lets you know that you're probably over the edge of the bed here. So they're covering the whole bed and you accomplished it really with just that one part. And then I added the circles in the background um, just to help bring it all forward. And the circles have no detail at all on them because all the detail is up front and I want your eye to stay up front. Um, so, something like this is a lot of fun. Everything's in the background. Uh, and then balloons behind them. So again, it's three layers. The balloons, the figures in the middle, and then Zoe up front. <laughs> uh, I think we know who's in charge on this one. So anyway, um, I have so many I could love to show and talk to you about. Uh, there's just not enough time, but I'm really having a great time drawing these and uh, we're looking forward to the sale. I hope that you guys will um, join us there and something catches your eye. So I'll see you next week.